Can I just say what an enormous pleasure to welcome you to the 14th Annual Australian Institute of Management Great Debate for 2012. Clap because we're here. I'm really looking forward to also sharing the podium with my little brother Ian. Um, it's going to be actually really interesting to hear Ian uh, argue the negative, effectively, that women are not natural born leaders. It's going to be particularly interesting given his role as Chief Human Capital Officer for the Public Service Commission <laughs> and knowing his true views on diversity. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to, to listen to. If Ian can argue it effectively, it will be impressive indeed. <laughs> Uh, in the end, it's going to be you, the audience, that decide the winners. Um, but I assure you that Ian's got experience in losing, losing in arguments to his two older brothers. And I would say that actually the three brothers all have experience in losing in arguments to our younger sister as well. <laughs> Plato, in his book, The Republic, certainly described the skills as innate. Some people are born to lead. The affirmative team believe that people are born to lead. And then through the society, through training, through experience, those skills can be enhanced. Maybe in the deep history, deep dark history, many, many years ago, men had an advantage in leadership. When your ability or your success was based on your ability to chase down and club a buffalo, men had an advantage. Thank you, Julie, and, and thank you, Stephen. Uh, Given my personal view of your capabilities, I actually think you did a pretty good job today. <laughs> so, in lifelong studies of identical and fraternal twins, that's twins who are genetically the same and genetically different, Professor Avery and colleagues established that only 30% of the determinants of leadership were genetically based. So around 70% of what it means to be a leader is determined by life experiences, or environmental factors. So we could actually really just stop there because the evidence is clear. We've proved our case. There's no such thing as a natural born leader, full stop. But you know, I've worn this uniform for over 31 years, and as I'm only 35, clearly, <laughs> clearly I was born to it. In fact, both my parents were in the Air Force. My father was a pilot and my mother was a clerk, but I'm sure she would have been a pilot if she'd been allowed to be one. So obviously I was just about born in this uniform. Women are natural born leaders. It's only the male dominated workforce that has constrained women's ability to have their voices heard and their innate abilities used to the fullest. The key is in enhancing the strengths that women already possess rather than spending time trying to rectify perceived deficiencies. Well, deficiencies in the eyes of men. Everyone will agree it's individual traits that creates a leader. And let's face it, men have studied this and they've trained in it and they're good. Visionaries, I am a leader because I have vision and women are perceived as having dreams. <laughs> Men are assertive. That's right, very assertive. They just make it up and everyone believes them. Women, they're bitches. I want this, you're a bitch. Not happening. <laughs> and it's no wonder, they've been conditioned since they were children. Christmas time, the little boys get G.I. Joe, weapons of mass destruction. And women, us girls, we get a Barbie, an action figure with 12 different types of dresses, and a camper van to entertain Ken when he comes home from the office. <laughs> Who do you think is going to grow up to be the leader? Having the opportunity to be a leader is not the same thing as having the innate in ability to be a leader. And just because women have more difficulty getting to the top doesn't mean they lack the requisite skills to do it. It just means they have to fight harder. That makes them better leaders, leaders who actually had to fight to get there, not just learn how to pee standing up. <laughs> Joan of Arc, she did it on her own. Ellen Sirleaf Johnson, Liberia's first female president in a country where women were seen as nothing more than objects to kill and rape. She did it on her own. Margaret Thatcher, Margaret Thatcher, Benazir Bhutto, Marie Claire, Virginia Woolf, Aung San Suu Kyi, Jessica Watson, for God's sake. The kid had the entire country, including the government, saying, get out of the boat, you silly little girl. <laughs> and she said, stuff you, I'm sailing around the world. She was 16. 
in. She hadn't been around long enough for someone to teach her how to be a leader. She was born with that drive. Women are natural born leaders. And if you don't believe me, perhaps you will believe the words of the world's most highly regarded and influential philosopher of our time, Lady Gaga. <laughs> I'm on the right track, baby. I was born to be brave. I'm on the right track, baby. I was born this way. Thanks very much. We're not sure about the affirmative, but we don't believe that anyone mostly is born with skills. In fact, us useless lot on the side of the negative, we even had to learn how to hold our own heads up. I'm not sure if you were born already able to hold your own heads up, but most of the babies I've ever, ever seen, that's the first thing they have to learn. So uh, as far as being born with an innate ability to lead, um, not being able to actually hold your head without wobbling <laughs> at the very beginning is uh, something of a prerequisite. The people who should lead us are actually postmenopausal women and old men because they've lived and they've learnt and leadership is not natural born for anyone. If you support the affirmative team, Stephen, Commander Jenny and Corinne, please clap now. And if you believe the negative team should win, please clap now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I declare the negative team the winners.